I think we've all seen the recent headlines about everything that seems to be really exciting and innovative when it comes to space. And most of those headlines have to do with a very small handful of billionaires, male billionaires like Richard Branson and Jeff Bezos and a few others. And what I wanted to do with this particular story is look beyond those headlines not only at some of the really exciting and promising innovations and advances that are happening in the sector, but I also wanted to really showcase some of the women that are driving some of these innovations. It's been really interesting seeing the evolution of public awareness about Musk, Bezos, and Branson's effort in space. I first became aware of SpaceX in the late 2000s, when they were first launching their Falcon 1 rockets. My colleagues and I were stunned that this small upstart from America could actually do this. Like, it was incredible. They've just put so much more attention uh, onto the space industry, and that is important. Uh, I think maybe in a way that does undermine the technology developments that they've put in. For example, you know, it, it took Elon Musk a decade long to get to where he, he wants to with the reusable rocket, with getting contracts and getting business. Uh, Richard Branson, you know, with the uh, developments on the White Knight, uh, you know, that wasn't something that happened overnight. There was a lot of effort, there was a lot of ingenuity, there was a lot of many, many technology developments. What they're doing is really admirable, but I do think it's time that we pay more attention to minority and diversity founders who are doing the same thing and are coming up close on their heels. So early on in my reporting process, I was introduced to a woman named Candace Johnson. She's American, but she's been living in Europe most of her life. Her dad actually worked on the very first commercial satellite for the US government back in the 60s. Today, she's not only worked for a handful of satellite companies over the years, but she's also invested in a growing number of space and new space startups. And so early on, she connected me to a very, very long list of women all across the globe. At Atomers, we are building and operating space tugs. There's a woman, Vanessa Clark. Her company, what they're developing, they call it a tugboat for satellites. We're using the technology of tomorrow. At Atomers, we are building and operating orbital transfer vehicles. These are space tugs that allow satellite operators to get to their place in space. Launch vehicles today are really great for getting payloads into space. But once it's in space, a rocket like that isn't that efficient at moving around. Which means if satellite operators want to put their systems beyond low Earth orbit or even in difficult to reach places in low Earth orbit, it costs a lot of money to get them there. With orbital transfer vehicles or space tugs, we can use low Earth orbit as a transportation hub. Rockets can launch payloads to low accessible orbits and our orbital transfer vehicles, which reside in space, can rendezvous with those payloads, capture them and transfer their payloads to their final destination. Our systems can then return to a low staging orbit to be refueled and serve more customers. So this method saves 20 to 40% of launch costs for satellite operators and allows really challenging missions that just aren't possible with the rockets that we have today. Lynette Tan is based in Singapore and she's trying to not only get more people into the sector, but she's really trying to start at a very young age. So things like space camp and education programs. In our education program, we start them from five years old 15 years old, 25 years old, all the way to 75 years old. And some of them have taken part in our programs when they were 15, gone on to 25 and started a space company. And then we help them with our accelerator program, we help them with the connectivity that we provide them, uh, and we provide them access to mentors and experts. We have 34, 36 startups from all over the world, from Russia, from Uzbekistan, from New Zealand, uh, from Hong Kong, and certainly from Singapore. We incubate them, we provide them with access and connections to key markets, to end users, uh, and certainly uh, in fundraising. We help to act also accelerate the adoption of their technologies, to integrate it into systems, 
to prove that their technology could make a difference to enterprises or to people. So we do a, a whole range of activities, almost end to end, uh, to get them up into the market so that we can, all of us here can use their technologies uh, for lives to be better, for businesses to be more efficient, uh, you know, to also make the planet a better place for all of us. When it comes to space, you know, the vision for a lot of this, for a lot of these innovations, is that at some point, we become a multi-planetary species. That's actually probably gonna happen. And if everything from spacesuits to vehicles to even like pods that will sustain human life, uh, at the onset at least, is all being developed and designed by one type of individual, then there are gonna be problems because they have really long-term and, and, and really broad implications for humanity. Um, so that's why I think it's really important to have representation from the get-go. So in the US, a lot of the large aerospace companies and NASA have great diversity programs. The recently retired CEO of Lockheed Martin was a woman CEO of Aerojet Rocketdyne is a woman, CEO of Northrop Grumman is a woman. These incredible women are breaking the glass ceiling at those large aerospace companies. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that there is a really big discrepancy in startups. And so it's difficult to get women with families or expecting families soon in early stage startups just because there isn't the stability that that type of candidate would typically look for. In leadership in startups, I mean, there's also a discrepancy. I know some great women founders out there who are just not as well funded as their male counterparts, which is something that I think we all have to come together as a community to change. It was tough, it still continues to be tough. Uh, we will take a while to break the stereotypes, but you know, I think that's why I find this job particularly meaningful because just being in this position to be able to help others, especially young women, you know, means a lot to me. I would want any young, bright brain, you know, who wants to reach for the star to not have to face unnecessary uh, challenges to get the one to where they want to be. Like I said, space tech is already super hard, you know, I don't want them to have more, more challenges than they should have. There are still definitely barriers and hurdles. Um, there's still a lack of women globally um, and a lack of different ethnicities and races represented throughout a lot of these companies. But I would say, you know, more and more, I mean, they're really, they're investing in each other's companies, they're networking with each other, they're giving each other speaking opportunities to sort of elevate their profiles. And there are more and more women, and again, more and more people in general that are being attracted to this field.